Back in episode 54 of the podcast, I shared my somewhat controversial policy of putting a price on privacy. It's been a while, obviously. Episode 54 was probably three or maybe even four years ago. So (laughs) I figured maybe you could use a refresher if you happened to have caught that one. And if not, I'll just sort of recap it for you. Basically, in 2012, two years into my business, but right around the time that I was switching to full-time, I had quit my nursing job. I was hired by a new client. And of course, you know, especially in that phase of business, every single new client is just gold. But I showed up for our first session. They hired me for a baby plan. So maternity, newborn, six months and one year. So it was going to be four sessions. And I hadn't met them when, you know, it was time for our first session. And I roll up and their house is spectacularly beautiful. They are beautiful. This was you know, their first baby and they made it seem like this was just, you know, the beginning. And I was just thrilled. Like I could not have been happier with this new client. And then it just got better because when we then did their sales session, this was back when I was doing uh, in-person sales, just for that maternity session, they spent over $3,000 on prints and products and albums and all this stuff. So this was like, the big fish that I had been, you know, dreaming of landing all this time that I had run my business. Then a couple of weeks go by. And of course, you know, first thing I want to do after I get their photos delivered to them is blog about this session. This was when I was actively blogging every single session that I did a bunch of things in between. I was blogging at least once a week. And so of course I blogged their maternity session and Shortly after I hit publish on that, I got a very angrily worded email from the husband who, like, in no uncertain terms, demanded that I take the blog down. And I agreed to do that. But the way that he was talking to me, like, it was very clear that he was on the brink of firing me and canceling everything forward. Now, I should point out they had signed my contract which included a very clear model release. And I didn't do anything, you know, it wasn't like I was sharing photos that included nudity or anything like that. I certainly didn't do anything that I was trying to sneak around about or do, you know, do anything nefarious, but I felt pretty cornered, right? Like this was a situation where I definitely wanted and needed this business. And I felt terrible that he was as upset as he was and felt like I had betrayed his trust. And, you know, these days you may hear me talk about the fact that no matter how clear your contract is, if someone doesn't read the contract and understand the contract or, you know, get that information in multiple ways, if they have a bad taste in their mouth, it's not going to really do anything. It may legally protect you, but it's not going to do anything about those bad feelings. So, you know, some of that lesson comes from this same story. So anyway, without really thinking too much about it, I, you know, was going to do what was necessary to salvage the situation. And I promised this family that I would never share their images again. I went on to work with them, not just for that 2012 cycle, but for several years, they would hire me multiple times a year. They did go on to have another baby. And over the course of those years, they have since moved away, but I made a lot of money with this family. But there was always this sort of edge where I felt frustrated. And that's because once the dust had settled and I knew that they weren't going to fire me and we had this very nice, you know, working relationship, I started to feel kind of taken advantage of, you know, here the father had been very aggressive and threatening with me. And, you know, years later, the, his wife, the, the mom posted my photos all the time on social media, on, you know, like anywhere and everywhere. Typically, she did not tag me or credit me at all, but it wasn't like those photos weren't out there. You know, I never felt like I was in a, given the way that that had been presented to me, I never felt like I was in a position where I could go back to them and be like, hey, so you're posting these photos, so I think I should be able to as well. I just kind of let it go and chalked it up to 
a lesson learned, but you know, it always kind of sat there in the pit of my stomach a little bit. I have this entire portfolio of photos from this client, beautiful house, beautiful family would be absolute portfolio worthy pieces, each and every one of them. And they've never seen the light of day and they never will. But like most frustrating situations in my business, that situation inspired this privacy policy that I used for a full decade, which basically boiled down to when you hire me, you sign my model release and my model release is pretty broad. And if you are uncomfortable with that model release, totally fine. I have three options for privacy that sort of go in a you know staged fashion. And if you want all the details of this, you can go back to episode 54, but each of those incurs an increasing fee. So basically you pay for increasing levels of privacy. That was how I ran my business, like I said, from 2012 all the way till last year. Last year, I came back to this policy uh, and I can't actually remember what it was that spurred me to sit down and be like, okay, I need to revisit this. But basically, you know, over the course of those 11 years, the world has changed a lot. Technology has changed. My own perspective on privacy has changed. My business has matured and stabilized. I am not in the same situation that I was in 2012, where I don't have a huge roster of past clients and referrals and things like that. I mean, that sort of thing takes time to build. And I have just sort of started to feel like a lot more people are requesting privacy. And in the initial phase of, you know, I get an inquiry and we're having a conversation about it and I send over my contract and all that sort of thing. I was getting more and more pushback. And of course, because I add a fee for that, there were several people who would say, well, you know, I don't want to pay a fee for that, but I do want privacy. So I'm going to go elsewhere. And I was willing to give those clients up. And, you know, that's part of having a policy and holding a boundary, but I was starting to notice it being kind of a pattern. And more than just missing out on clients and feeling like, you know, it was uh, it was costing me in that way. Honestly, that privacy policy was starting to feel increasingly out of alignment when people were asking questions about it. I found myself kind of questioning my own policy. <laughs> so I did what we should all do when something in our businesses isn't, you know, sitting right, isn't sparking joy. And I reevaluated. So that was a long preamble. But today I want to share that update with you here on the podcast. Welcome to This Can't Be That Hard. My name is Anami Tonkin, and I help photographers run profitable, sustainable businesses that they love. Each week on the podcast, I cover simple, actionable strategies and systems that photographers at every level of experience can use to earn more money in a more sustainable way. Running a photography business doesn't have to be that hard. You can do it, and I can show you how. So first, let's talk about how, you know, the world has changed from 2012 to now. My client in 2012 was mad specifically because his name was in the blog post. So if someone, you know, Google searched his name, in theory, my photos or that blog post could appear. And fair enough, you know, the other policy that I changed at that time in my business was that I stopped using last names at any, you know, in any context. So I only ever used first names. And that was the baseline policy that I had when someone would ask about privacy, I would say, you know, I can use your photos, but I'm only ever going to use first names and I don't tag people. So, you know, it felt pretty anonymous. When we know better, we do better. I learned that tagging someone's full name was an issue. But these days, names aren't needed to identify someone in a photo, right? Facial net recognition and AI are now mainstream realities of the internet. And those technologies are expanding by the minute. <laughs> so whereas in 2012, I could reason reasonably argue that an untagged photo provided some amount of anonymity that's a much harder argument to make in 2024. And as governments and courts try to keep up with technology, laws and regulations are being enacted that reflect this societal shift toward privacy as a fundamental right. 
And the thing is, I have never questioned that fundamental right to privacy. I always made privacy an option. But last year, it just felt like I needed to take the next step and make privacy the default option. So privacy is now built into my business. When someone hires me to photograph their family, they sign a model release and my model release now reads something along the lines of, you know, the photographer agrees that no photographs taken during the session will be shared, published, or displayed in any digital format, including but not limited to websites, social media platforms, blah, 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 without the prior written consent of the client. The photographer will seek and obtain express permission from the client before using any images for online promotional or marketing purposes. Please do not <laughs> take that as legal gospel. If you are looking to write a clause in your contract, please have that reviewed by a lawyer. I am not a lawyer. But, you know, so there's wording in there that basically says, I'm not going to share your photos in any digital format, period, without your express written permission. But it's not like I wait for them to sign the contract to tell them about this. You know, well before they're signing my model release, they are hearing about it. So when I put this into place, I figured if I was going to potentially lose the ability to use most or even all of my newer client images for my portfolio, I may as well <laughs> compensate from a marketing perspective by being very upfront about this privacy guarantee. And look, I am sure that there are photographers in my area who offer privacy or even build it in as the default, but I don't know of anyone else locally who's making that a front and center part of their unique value proposition, which I would encourage you to consider because I think in this day and age, it is a pretty big issue for a lot of people. But that's not it. It's not like I was like, well, I'm just going to make privacy the default and give up all the rights to my photos forever and ever, right? You guys know better than that. I am always keeping an eye on the sustainability of my business, my ability to market myself, et cetera, et cetera. So a couple of other things changed. Number one, I raised my prices for the first time since 2017 in any significant way. My product prices have changed over the years, you know, with fluctuations in cost. But for the most part, my package pricing has stayed pretty stable. But anyway, so I, I raised my prices. It's not a big jump. It was like percentage wise about 15%. But what that means is that if I do feel the need to update my portfolio, I can hire models with that extra money, right? I've got sort of the extra budget built in to pay for portfolio building. But here's the other part that I think you should know about. And I think that this part is kind of the genius of the whole thing. As you likely know, <laughs> if you've been listening for any period of time, I use the simple sales system to work with my clients. And part of that, the part that comes down to the way people pay for my services is that first they pay a session fee and then they purchase a collection. So the session fee is paid at the time of booking and then the collection is chosen and paid for once they've had a chance to preview their images. What I do now is if I have a session where I love the images and I feel like they may you know, be portfolio worthy, something that I wanna share in the future, if that is the case, and if it's not, then like I just send the, everything goes as normal. But if I do want to use the photos, then when I send that slideshow preview, I send them an offer where if they are willing to pre-authorize my use of the images, then they can take 20% off whichever collection they want to purchase. And there are a couple of big benefits to doing this at the time of collection purchase rather than before we book when we're doing the pre-session phone call. First of all, I think that this is a little confusing. So as you all know, I'm a big believer that when you confuse someone, you lose them. Like you don't want to give someone too many options or too much information to consider when they are, especially when they are at the booking phase, but really at any stage of the process. You want to make the decision-making process as straightforward as possible. So you give them the information that they need when they need it. So by not 
complicating the booking process with this other thing to consider that's sort of out of the ordinary, you know, you're doing yourself a favor. And then there's the trust factor, right? At the point of them purchasing a collection, they know me. Hopefully they felt comfortable with me. We did the session together. Maybe I came to their house. Basically, hopefully <laughs> they know I'm not some sort of weirdo or like disrespectful person who's going to go like splashing their photos somewhere or in some way that they feel uncomfortable with. Then there's the fact that they've also had the chance to actually see their photos, right? Assuming that they like the photos the way that I do, they may feel more willing to have those photos shared in public and even found in association with a search for their name, especially when I'm working with like newborns and people who might be breastfeeding. I feel like if I were to raise the idea of like, are you willing to give me permission to use their photos before they've had a chance to see their photos, they may feel weird about giving that permission. And finally, if I were to promise that ahead of booking the session, then not only would it water down my promise of privacy, but it would also basically lock me into offering this discount to everyone. When in fact, there are plenty of sessions that I have where I'm like, yeah, none of these photos are the photos that I want to like put on my website. So by holding that information back, not only do I make the process easier and present that information at a better time, but I give myself the opportunity to choose not to give that to a particular client. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why I think that that should be held till after you've worked with them and after you've had the session. The financial incentive, you know, obviously there are people out there who are like, I don't discount, discounting is bad for my brand. I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with my brand where it is. My price point is part of the brand. And if they are willing to pay these higher prices to begin with without the promise of a discount, then giving them a surprise financial incentive is, you know, is just a positive and it's doable for me because I've padded my general prices. But on the other hand, I will say I would not make, if you're considering doing something like this, I wouldn't make the financial incentive so big that it feels like undue pressure, right? You don't want to slash your prices if they're willing to let you use them because that could put someone in a position where they're kind of coerced into allowing you to use their photos. I feel like that, you know, 20-ish percent range is a pretty good one. So far, you know, and it's only been, it's been less than a year. The sample size isn't huge at this point, but I have had about a 50% acceptance rate on this offer. And honestly, it has seemed pretty well received even by the people who have chosen not to take me up on it. It's felt really good. I didn't want to share it right away because I always like to <laughs> see how something goes before I recommend it. But it has been, to me, it has felt like the right solution to kind of a sticky problem. So whether this policy or something like it is right for you, I wanted to share my thought process here because I really do think that in our line of work, the issue of privacy is only going to become bigger. It's only going to become thornier. And we need to be thinking ahead about how we plan to respond in the face of certainly legislation that could limit our ability to market ourselves in the same way uh, that we always have. <laughs> but really, even beyond legislation and the rule of law and all that sort of thing, we have to be thoughtful about both our clients' feelings and our own. So if you haven't already, I would invite you to consider this subject of privacy or reconsider this subject and ensure that your current policies and practices are in alignment with both your business plan and your personal values. Hope you guys have a great week. Well, that's it for this week's episode of This Can't Be That Hard. I'll be back same time, same place next week. In the meantime, you can find more information about this episode along with all the relevant links, notes, and downloads at thiscan'tbethathard.com slash learn. If you like the podcast, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Even better, share the love by leaving a review in iTunes. And as always, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic week.